Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and this episode we're going to start off with trying to fulfill this lunar landing uncrewed mission and what I've done is taken off the sample return package from this mission which is more or less identical to that with some tweaks and so now even if a stage fails uh, we will be able to land on the moon safely so at least I believe so so uh, and I've added some extra science onto it to uh, get some science out of the whole mission and yeah so that is the plan here and then we'll attempt to do the crewed lunar orbit mission which is a bit trickier uh, because we I mean our launch pad is limited we should probably upgrade the launch pad speaking of which but first we'll do this and then we'll move on to that so without further ado ignition turns out we can test getting back to orbit around the moon, we'll do that, but uh, there's no heat shield on the mission, so we can't bring it all the way back or anything, and no parachute, obviously. We are still working on getting data on the NK-9V engine on the second stage. I added uh, downward-facing RCS thrusters for the AJ-10 to sell the fuel down there. Okay, separation. I love the H1s. All right. Had me going for a sec there. And we should be okay for fairing separation. Seriously. Okay, so it's just this bottom bus, if you will, that was supposed to land on the moon. I took off the landing legs from the AJ-10 stage, we'll ditch it before landing anyway. If it gets that far. And we certainly have enough to make orbit on this stage. It'll be nice to get the upgrade to the RD-58 so that we can uh, get it for more time. Oh, we got an engine failure. Separation, RCS forward. And... Ignition. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, once the NK-9V actually works, then we'll be able to <laughs> do things properly, but... So after this, it looks like we'll need about 700 out of here. It's a little bit tight for landing, to be honest. Maybe I... I maybe I misjudged the whole if one stage fails. That NK-9V failed really quickly. I was hoping that it'd be if one stage fails a little bit later. <laughs> uh, the NK-9V provides so much extra delta-V, it's uh, 4,000 meters per second. It's tough to compensate for that, but we'll try. Okay, separation. Yeah, I think we're below what we need to land on the moon. The loss of the NK-9V stage was a little bit too much. You know, at this point it might be better to use this to transfer to another planet rather than... Because, you know, 5,000 meters per second is good enough for a flyby. And it has all the scientific instruments and such. We wouldn't want to send it to Mars. I don't think it has enough power for that. Oh, well, the comms, though. All right. Well, it'll be in orbit around the moon to help with communications, then. We'll just set it into orbit around the moon. Uh, landing is pointless at this point. Uh, we don't have enough for landing. So, yeah. Lunar Orbiter Mission. <laughs> That's what it is. There's nothing wrong with a lunar orbiter. It's like what most people do most of the time. When was the last time we actually landed something on the moon? Well, I mean, the United States as opposed to China. I guess the fuel settling thrusters aren't exactly in the best position for turning it. Well, at least definitely not in that axis. So anyway, selling fuel down. We'll just use this to turn it.
still a lot of data units to accumulate for the AJ-10. We're only at 3,500, so we've got a long way to go on that engine. And really, mean time before failure is not that great. 47 minutes or so. Eh, we can skip that. Okay. So as you can see, after a transfer burn, we only have 2,000 meters per second, which is not enough to slow down our velocity once we get there. And if we got to be a relay satellite, an inclined orbit is not bad, and we would like a pretty high orbit too, actually. So let's keep that loose. We have enough delta V to get into orbit without taking advantage of the moon's gravity too much. Um, yeah, let's get higher, actually. Maybe even more inclined, too. There's probably no new science here, but we might as well... Oh, wait! Infrared radiometer. See? You can never tell. Well, the priority is to do the lunar landing. We have another rocket ready with the old system. We could try that while building a new one like this. I really need the NK-9V and the AJ-10 at full reliability, whatever that happens to be. In the meantime, we are unlocking new technology, 1966 stage combustion engine engines, and maybe those engines uh, that will provide an upgrade to the NK-9V that will make it more reliable. We'll see. I'm sort of okay with a 12 hour... Well, let's see what circularizing gets us. Maybe an 8 hour orbit is good. We can change the inclination if we wanted to. But we'll just leave it around here-ish. We got a little bit of science, but certainly not what we wanted. We'll have to try and launch again. Uh, the crewed mission... Uh, we should probably wait a little bit longer. Maybe it'll benefit from... No, I don't know. If 1966 stage combustion improves the RD-58, maybe that'll be worthwhile. We'll see. But yeah, maybe we should wait until that technology to do anything. So we've got this Lunar Lander A with the old system. And then in the meantime, while we're launching that, we'll uh, build uh, another one of these. Okay, well, it feels like it's been a while since we've launched an Atlas, but uh, here we are, this backup mission. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Ooh, frisky. Okay, booster engine set. Okay, I really don't want the top fairings to... Well, actually, we could probably release them now, even. Of course, our other Lunar Lander mission, the Lunar Lander B, does not make use of the Pioneer 5. Here, we're back to using that probe. Okay, uh, about to make orbit. There's a lot of pauses, though. Okay, that's a little bit high, 284 by 170, but okay. And uh, separation. RCS forward. Good. And this is the RD-0109, I hope. Not, not the 0105 still. Yeah, it's the 0109. Okay. So at least we've got that. But probably... Well, I mean, the RD-58 would be too big for the top of this anyway. We'd have to have a, the, the other adapter. Anyway, and actually probably we have uh, better... RCS better a lot of things. This still uses hydrazine and it's still using the little um, Araby, the XASR. So interesting times with this, but if it works, it works. But will it work? Uh, let me extend the solar panels. Okay, throttling up. And we're past the node. Ignition. And it failed anyway. Well, the verniers worked. <laughs> okay. Well, here we go again. Um, so yeah, this has its problems too. But uh, yeah, no, I don't think there's anything useful we can do with this. Let's turn retrograde and dispose of it. 
Okay, let's shut down there. And that we'll consider disposed of. Okay, well, here we go again. We do have to get this done. The lunar landing contract is up in 103 days, so I'll plug away at it until we get it right. Ignition. And launch. And here I thought we were doing lunar landings without any trouble. That we could move on to sample returns not quite so fast, apparently. Well, I guess at this point it's probably the right time to broach the subject of test flight. So there have been some comments uh, expressing disdain for test flight, let's say. I don't mind it so much. And I've explained that, you know, it sort of adds a little bit of suspense into the whole thing. And I appreciate it for that. Because otherwise, it'd be dead boring if I was always successful. I mean, what's the point? Uh, so, yeah. But, you know, you guys can express your views about test flight. Certainly, all of this will be achieved much faster without it. I mean, and I do basically have the burn times for most of these engines memorized. So, uh, while constructing the missions, I'm not going to push them beyond the burn time. Yeah, I think I can pretty much hold to that, even if I dump test flight. But, you know, it adds another dynamic to the whole thing. Okay, separation. Well, we have an NK-9V for now. Fairing set. Double check. Fairing set. Okay. Okay, well, this stage has worked this time, finally. And we're controlling our orbit here. Okay, one oh, oh uh, sorry, 205 by 177. And a little bit left. Good. And our inclination is fine. Separation. RCS. Okay, we are free. Let's get those antennae out. For safety's sake, since right now we have the Delta V to do so, we'll aim to make orbit first and then land. We have oodles of Delta V, but that is assuming that an engine doesn't quit on us. The one thing we can be sure of is that the last engine will not quit on us, the one kilonewton thruster. That is safe. Okay, ignition. Ah, I failed. But, but that's not going to stop us this time. Gosh darn it, it's not going to stop us. I haven't started this properly. All right. Outright loss of the RD-58 stage. That's harsh because, you know, if something goes wrong in the middle of a burn with this one, that's not going to work. But if this gets through the burn, then that's okay. We were actually quite early on this burn because I started immediately after the other one failed, but the timing was actually for the previous stage. Now this has infinite ignitions that I'm tempted to shut it down and restart, but since we've had bad experiences with that, I think I'll just leave it running even though we're early. And in fact, this uh, stage will be expended and we need a little bit from the one kilo newton thruster after this. I guess I should have been using the RCS all this time. Anyway, uh, separation and everything else should be ignitable, I think. That might not turn out the best location for communication. I think I'm gonna go over to the other side of the moon.
Or that's not going to help too much. Depends. We'll see. Oh, oh, oh no! Uh, I just encountered a persistent rotation bug. I was setting relative rotation to the sun and it wrecked it. What, now we have to worry about persistent rotation doing crazy things? Hold on, let me just uh, Alt F4. Okay, so I restarted and it looks like uh, we're good. We're at the point where I ignited the one kill thruster. Um, it's not correct about this maneuver. That's not the correct maneuver. Um, all we need to do is just a little bit more of the burn because the prior stage had already done a bit. This doesn't look like quite the orbit I was expecting, but it should still work. And this time I guess I won't have persistent rotation hold relative rotation to the sun or anything. Just safer not to, I suppose. Okay, we made it to Lunar SOI. I guess maybe we should just go in for a direct landing. Just to make sure we have communication. Well, let's run some instruments. Oh, here we've done everything. Okay, everything's looking good, I guess. I mean, it's tough to say on these types of landing trajectories where you're going straight in. But I certainly have had some recent experience with them. Let's check the instruments. Mm, no. We've done everything. The feel is quite a bit tighter than expected at this point. I think it's partly because of the RCS puffing away in all directions. I'm doing it now, of course, but earlier. I felt it was a bit excessive. Mm, it's way tight now. Uh, it says I have a lot of time to suicide burn. Uh-oh. Oh no, we're past... I don't have much delta V. Oh, uh, this is my fault. Oh, wait. It's okay. It's okay. We lithobraked. Successful lithobraking, folks. Excellent. Well, that, that was worse than I expected. All right, transmit. I, I trust that counts, right? There's definitely signs from the surface. This is definitely landed. Okay, it counted. Finally, our great nightmare is over. But boy, was it a lot more difficult than it needed to be. All right, and it is fresh science. We've got, well, I, I get the feeling that we lost a few scientific instruments because this is, we had like seven things. Oh, some of these aren't surface valid, unfortunately. But okay, we got it here. Let's go do something else finally. Okay, so here we are with our first attempt at crude lunar orbit with Daffrey Kerman. And uh, Daffrey is, of course, a newbie. Uh, it is her first flight. So we will see how it goes. Who knows? We've been having all sorts of interesting issues. Uh, hopefully it got all of those issues out of the way and we might have a clean flight this time. Who knows? Ignition. Why is SAS really wanting to do something? Alright, launch. So remember, the one kill Newton thruster at the top is facing the opposite direction. So when you take a look at the total delta V, that's an important point. And that uh, engine should now have enough delta V to return us from whatever orbit we capture into around the We've dumped the HTP from the pod, so we're not going to be able to use the HTP RCS. I made the parachute slider. I reduced a little bit of a blazer based on our previous results.
on to shut some engines down here. As our thrust to weight ratio gets pretty high. Uh, I'll let the Afri get a uh, taste of slightly above 4 G's. Alright. Alright, we are on just two engines now. Okay, uh, the H1's completed the burn. Separation. This is an LR-105 still. Good old LR-105s. Aren't we glad to see it again? Probably we need a few degrees of up pitch here. Okay, as expected, the LR-105 has done its job. Um, we're a little bit tight on the whole orbit thing, so... I don't know whether we're going to need the RD-58 to complete orbit or not. Sort of? Maybe RCS? Maybe RCS will do. Let me deploy the solar panels while the RCS is added. I reduced the amount of RCS on this stage as well. Okay, we have an orbit. And that other stage decided to explode for no reason. I'm gonna decouple the top node here. I hope that's the right node for the nose cone. We don't want to be carrying any extra mass this time. So no nose cone. And in particular, what we would like is maximum paracelene of 200 kilometers and maximum apocelene of 500. So, well, it's beneficial to get the periapsis as low as possible. We're taking a fairly slow trip there, five days. But hopefully that means it doesn't take too much to capture and get into a low orbit. We can have the apoapsis as high as 500, so we'll do that because it'll be cheaper. Not necessarily cheaper to break orbit though. Okay, so that maneuver there will be 700 meters per second. Right now, in this stage, we have 4,102. And then we have 920 to get back and then control the pod afterwards. So that's the return stuff. Well, it looks doable for now. The pauses are a bit frequent. Maybe I should restart again. But I did already restart during this recording session, so this is getting a bit annoying. All right, throttling up to sell the fuel down. And double checking. All right, ignition. Okay. We've got that ignition. Okay, the burn seems to be on time. Everything looking good through the maneuver node except the frequent pauses for no good reason. Maybe I should just clean up some vessels. I probably have a lot of junk lying around. Ah, oh, the stage failed. Stage went out early. How's our data units on it? Well, it's the new version. We've only got 6,300 data units. Meantime, before failures, four out, more than four hours, four hours and 20 minutes though. So that's really a bad burn because it's only a five minute burn, right? I mean, so you're talking about, it's not really a one in 48 chance, but, or what, what was it? Yeah, well, one in 52 chance, not really, but you know, in my heart, I feel like it was a one in 52 chance and I got shafted. But anyway, um, this is not going to be good enough to make orbit and break orbit again, so we just have to 
do another flyby, I guess. But a very light flyby. I don't want to get too close to the moon this time. Daffri. I think I call her Daphne. Daffri. It will just be grazing the the SOI of the moon. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. So 26,000 kilometers. We'll get her inside of the moon, but not quite there. All right. Oh, wait. I've made a horrible mistake. <laughs> um, we're on internal power. Right. That's not good. Okay. Other way. <laughs> I nearly condemned Daffrey to uh, bad times. I might still end up condemning Daffrey to bad times. Depends on how low we get this orbit. Sorry, Daffrey, no lunar excursion for you. Well, I shouldn't say excursion. That sounds like she's stepping out. Well, she could step out, actually, but anyway. No lunar adventure. Yeah, that is a problem with this system. This has to do the burn with the trunk. I'll, I have to check the delta V on that. I really ought to rearrange the solar panels so they're on their own separate little bit. So we can dump the RD-58 stage without dumping the solar panels. We need to be well under one day on our orbital period if we're gonna keep that electric charge. I mean one day is 86,400 seconds, right? And our drain is about 0.53 right now. which is 75,000 seconds. So, uh, about conservatively 20 hours, really closer to 21. Okay, that right there looks fine by me. Um, 60 kilometer periapsis, 17 and a half hour orbital period. Hopefully that's that's okay. By my calculations, it's okay. But maybe Kerbal doesn't agree. You never know. And a little bit of extra delta V to orient the craft, of course. This is a heck of an abort. Okay, we've passed Apoapsis and we have more than half of our electric charge, so that's good. Still pretty tight. Okay, surface negative. And we'll need descent mode on. Still a high orbit. I don't know how many pieces of debris. We've got a lot of stuff going on that we need to get rid of. Okay, getting ready for the rollover. Okay, that should be good enough. Rolling back around. Okay, things are calming down. Maximum G-forces, 4.7, and that was probably on launch. Well, we got Daffri her first flight, and we also came up with some refinements that I could do. Also, I got another read on the ablator we need, and it seems like we could dump a little bit more, maybe. Gotta be careful with that sort of thing, though. Uh, we only use a tiny bit of the capsules ablator, but we do need some on it just to convince the heating that it's not completely unprotected. If we dump all the ablator, it's going to treat it like paper. So we got to be careful. Do not dump all of the ablator on something that has ablator. But yeah, we could lighten things up a bit. We'll see how the parachutes do, since those are a little bit lighter than previously. Okay, and full parachute deployment brings us to... Uh, still 
pretty low, 4.7 meters per second. I'd like to see that closer to 6. So the parachutes are still a little bit heavy. Okay, well, recover vessel. Well, I can't see the KSC right now, but Daffri got to level 1. It didn't give me a message for how long she's going to be out. So does that mean she's already prepped for action? It looks like available for next mission. Philby is still recovering. Daffri, after all of that business, is ready to go again. So I approve. Very good. It's completely random. I have no idea what it, what, it, what it's related to. Completely random as far as I could tell. All right. Well, um, that's enough for me. I think I'll call it an episode. We barely got something done with the lunar landing, and that's not really what I wanted to get done. But uh, we have some work to do. I need to clean up some missions to reduce the lag, so let me do that. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.